Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zimbibor. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at updates to ZimSocket. So these are things that are new in ZimCat 01. Now, uh, sockets aren't really quite in ZimCat, but we have done some work on the server that serves the sockets. We got a new server that is reliable, and we're so happy about that. That means we can go ahead with, with um, more socket projects. So let's show you what we've done in ZimCat. If we click on the, the cat there and press uh, in here, we're not going to look at the generator in this bubbling, but we'll look at that in the next bubbling or the one after and connectors, same thing. And there's the flipper that we looked at in the last bubbling. And then here is the Zim socket example. So if we press on that, it takes us to dum, 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 a gallery. Now this is a multi-user gallery, which means anybody who happens to be looking at this at the moment will see these pictures moving magically as I move them. And when they move the pictures, uh, well, we'll see that too. Um, and you can click on the pictures to change them and they would see that. You can also change the back round color and other people would see that as well and the frame colors so there's a bunch of different things here and should we see it work as a socket though let's reduce this down and we can grab that and put it in another window here I don't have to pull that off see there it is and that looks like the last one so I'm pulling this off and I'll bring it back in just a sec and now as I move this one the other one moves. Isn't that magical? And when we press, we change the background colors. Neat, huh? And there as well. So if I pull, oh, well, you can't see. I'll move. You see the, just the little edge of that one? Hello. <laughs> and there we go. I don't really like uh, the dark colors. So why don't we go in and take a look at the code that does that? Well, maybe before we do that, why don't we peek at some other uh, socket info? So if you go back to the Zim site, which is here, Hmm, sockets. If you look under code right here and scroll on down, this is the template that we would copy in when we want to start Zim, or there's a shorter template as well that we would copy in. Here's various frames on how to do different types of templates. So you're welcome to look at that. Adobe CloudFront. Um, and then we've got some help things. We've got some tools and uh, accessibility and here it is here are the libraries so under libraries here's zim socket for multi-user the game the physics uh, 3js and pizzazz and zim base libraries so we we'll click on the sockets so this is multi-user as well this thing right here if i select this here other people in the world would would see that selected and they could select with their own color up to six people we have six colors or five colors I can't remember which one and uh, once that happens once you get more than five people <clears throat> then it starts over again and the next person comes in would be all alone and then another person comes in there'd be two people so that's the concept of rooms so sockets have rooms uh, here's a bunch of other examples here there's a, a simple avatar example where you pick an avatar you go okay and then you click around and that's um, there's actually somebody in there at the moment they're not clicking but uh, that's an avatar room here's a chat so a sample chat and you can join that i think the chat uh, rooms as well uh, has the concept of rooms behind it whereas um, if you put it in a different word there somebody else will have to put in that same word to be in that room so it's like chatting about topics in a sense Here's a multi-user coloring for an egg and you pick a color and can start coloring and then other people will also see that color as well. So it's a collective collective coloring. Doop, doop, doop. And once I close this, if I'm the last person there, the, all the socket data is left. But it's kind of neat how this works. When you come in, it's got a history. It remembers the last 100 colors that were done. And then it animates those in really quickly. It goes and fills those up with colors. Uh, now that I've told you, do you want to see it work? Let's try some pink colors. So here is um, what our thing looks like. And now let's watch the history of that. So I'm going to copy the egg, 
pop on over to here and hit go. And do 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 do. There they all animate in, and we're ready to go with the multi user coloring. Cool, huh? And what other ones? Here is a, uh, this was a, um, a diagram that multiple people can recreate the diagram by dragging things around. So it's a bunch of thing, a bunch of bunch of things to drag, and everybody can drag them and put them into the right place and snap them. That was that one. And this is a remote control concept where one side of the socket, uh, you can press a button, and when you press the button, this thing animates on the other side. If you use this slider, then the number of rings change on this side. So this is the remote, and this is what's being controlled. You can also just drag anywhere on this, and it will drag the circle around. Or if you choose tilt, you could tilt a mobile device, and it will take that tilt information on the mobile device and tilt uh, here on the screen. So that could be up projected in a, I don't know, who knows, a show or something. You could have multiple people come in and all control what is being projected. It might be on a screen or what have you. So uh, here are the features of ZimSocket and it is free. There's there's a Zim server, which if you have your own node server, you're welcome to, to put that server there. But like I said, we've just moved to a more reliable server that <laughs> is still running. Problem is, for the last year or so, we were running on um, on the Dan Zen host, uh, which is, you know, my, my host, and we just couldn't get the node to work right. Every, every week or two, it would stop running, even though we were running it with forever, and so it just wasn't um, reliable enough, but but now it is. And there's a few other Zim services as well that operate on that. There's Distill and Wonder, so those are also, again, more solid uh, than they were before. Wonder is for microstats, so now we feel confident um, uh, telling people about Wonder again, so you can use that, and it will tell you how many times you clicked on a button, or how long it took you to do something, or uh, you know anybody. To, there's various types of microstats. Um, here's the the Zim socket on the CDN. But anyway, what what I was going to say is that you you can just up here, bup, 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 uh, right here is a request. So you can hit request, and you're with the name and email and what app name you want to use, and then you can go and use the Zim servers with that app name. And uh, as far as we're concerned, that, that's good. Then you don't have to set up Node and all the socket I.O. and the server stuff. And, all right. So socket I.O. would need to be on that server, but also on the clients as well. So if you go through this route, then you need to still use socket I.O. On the, on the client, that's the browser, and Zim socket, and then Zim. And you're good to go. Let's let's go in and take a look at that code, shall we? So move this on over. Here is the code for that multi-user gallery example. We're bringing in the new Zimcat 01. Here is the socket I/O, which is socket I/O. Here's the Zim server URL. So if we ever change servers, as as we did here, we can just change it in the Zim server URLs. And anybody who has been using ZimSocket, it, it won't affect them. Even though we change servers, uh, it, anytime your code asks for the server, it would go to this location. And as long as we keep that location up to date, you'll be up to date. So I would suggest that you use this as well. And then here's ZimSocket 1.1. We've upped it to 1.1 because we took away the namespace. So now you don't need the namespace with ZimSocket. There might have been one or two other things in there too that we adjusted. All right, so now we're into Zim code. Now this is a little bit more complicated than just your average drag around a thing. In the documentations for Socket, that's another thing that we mentioned. We now have added the documentation for sockets in the docs. So at the bottom of the docs, bloop, there is ZimSocket. And in the bottom of the, the docs in ZimSocket, we've put together a nice easy example, or as easy as we can get it. So this is um, this is the easy shared, it's a shared ball. So you, everybody can drag around a ball together. And uh, so you might want to take a look at that. That's about as simple a socket example as you can get. And then we are uh, in the gallery. It's a little bit more complex because we are keeping track of 
a bunch of different things. So here they are. Well, here's us making the pictures. So all, all this stuff is, is making the wall, making the pictures, uh, tiling those to start. And then we get into the socket stuff right here. So all, all that stuff up there, just normal Zim things. So for the sockets, uh, the gallery feature that can be changed, get oh, each gallery feature that can be changed gets its own property as follows. So I think there were six of them, or were there five? Let's just check. Egg, egg, gallery, collective coloring. There it is. One, two, three, four. Sorry, four, four of them. So there's uh, going to be four pictures. Well, there's actually more pictures because e each one has, may have multiple pictures. It looks like each one's got two pictures. Nope, that one's got three pictures. So you see what I mean? A little uh, touch um, custom in, in there. But they each have a frame. They each have a set of pictures. Um, they, they're each going to have an X and Y location. So the X and Y location. And check this out. This is important as well. The stacking order. So if we go to a socket here. It kind of goes from the top to the back. And if we pop on back to wherever our socket was here. Huh. Looks so much the same that I didn't even see it changing, but that's me changing. All right, so the stacking order is the same. And if I pull this off, we can sort of see, watch that in action. I, th I think we can. Oh, my windows are too big. So as I pick this, <laughs> grr. As I pick, and that one's already on top now, but if I pick this one up, you see how it comes up on top? That often is important and sometimes forgotten. So um, same deal should happen here now. Palladian blue is on top. All right, so uh, we've listed the various properties, the border zero, border one, border two, border three. Uh, each has a pick num, pick zero, one, two, three, and the x is 0, x, what are x2s and x3s? Oh, x and y0, x and y1, x and y2, x and y3. Great. So there's a thing called get latest value, and that in ZimSocket gets the latest value that was set for, for anything. And we're using that when we come in, we get the latest values, and that way we can make sure as, as we arrive that we're going to put these things in the right place. Now, it may be that we've already placed things up here. I think we did. It looked like we did. So what we did is we threw an overlay right here, this rectangle over top of everything. It's just a big, darker rectangle that's the same size as the stage. And what we'll do is when the sockets are ready, when we um, when we receive the socket data, then we will fade that out. So we're going to fade this thing out. We also have a waiter that is waiting until that happens. So we've actually, we're showing the waiter until the sockets have loaded. And then as you can see, when the socket is ready, we do our stuff, we set our stuff, and then we call this fade overlay. And the fade overlay hides the waiter and animates in the overlay. And once it finishes animating, or well, it animates it out, sorry. <laughs> Oopsies, animates out the, the overlay to zero. And once it's finished, we remove the, um, the overlay. That's what's happening there. All right, so here's how we call the socket, new socket. We pass in the Zim socket URL, and that comes from the uh, this file right up here. Do you remember where we're going to get that from? Zim server URLs. So if we go to take a look at the Zim server URLs just quickly here. This isn't quite an explore, it's a bubbling, but uh, whatever, you might want to see that. There they are, and there's where we're going to get the socket now. And if we ever happen, we used to um, have this on Amazon, and then we moved it to the Dan Zen server, and now we've moved it to a zimjs.org uh, the socket there. Same with Wonder and Distill. Uh, roughly the same kind of arrangement. That's good. Okay, so that's that. And the, the name of that variable, because we've imported that, the name of that variable is called 
zoom socket URL. Here's the the keyword that we have requested, and that allows us to not over overstep on each other's data. So um, you just got to be careful. I mean, you could hack us by going in and, and setting up one with the Zim Gallery. And I can't remember what we did. I don't think we did anything to stop uh, that from um, conflicting. So if you ever do find something conflicting, you're always welcome to put start using a different keyword or put some like little code in your keyword so it's very unlikely that people will will overwrite that um, you can do your own hosting as well and deal with things that way as well so when the socket is ready we're going to set the gallery so this is how we set the gallery up we're also looping through the pictures so here is us looping through all the pictures in the tile Oh, and we're going to apply events to them. So we're adding mouse down events to all of the tiles pictures. So a mouse down, a press move, a change border, and a change pick. We uh, normally don't get a change border event except up above when we made our pictures. We made a class uh, for those pictures. So like there's actually a picture class, a custom class, and that custom class extends a container and the container extends an event dispatcher. So that allows us to um, dispatch our own custom events. One of those events was a change border. Another one was a change pick. And so here we are picking up on those events. This is your traditional press move event that came with CreateJS. This is your traditional mouse down that came with JavaScript. And then um, these two custom events that we're doing various things. We're setting properties. Uh, on the socket object when when that happens. See that? So we've got a set property, singular. If we're going to only set one property, we've got to set properties if it's multiple. So here we are setting both an X and a Y. So we're making this uh, empty object. We're storing the picks X and Y in that empty object, and then we're passing that object to. So it, it, when you set properties, it's with uh, a an object literal. Here we're back to setting a property, that is the border, and it depends on the pick num. So in each case we're dealing with a pick num as well. And um, so be it. Uh, when we change a pick, socket set property, that pick, plus whatever pick num that pick happens to be, uh, and then whatever um, number that is. Now why isn't why we're doing that? Like pick dot pick num, we're changing pick. Maybe we're just telling the socket which um, which pick num is the current on, on top pick or something, I'm not sure. And then when we tap the wall, if there is a socket ready for us, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, we did this on CodePen initially, and in CodePen we didn't put that foil on the top, we just showed the empty gallery wall and then we brought in the pictures. Uh, the reason why we did that, to tell you the truth, is when we built it for CodePen, Zim was, Zim Socket was being hosted on the Dan Zen server and it wasn't reliable enough. So, uh, you know, a week later it would be gone and we wouldn't notice. And then so for a week or two, it might be on CodePen not working. And we wanted them to at least see the pictures in the gallery. <laughs> but now that it's reliable enough, we've um, done this fade overlay and there we are good. So anyway, this was just saying, hey, if the socket worked, then go ahead and set the wall num when you tap on it. Otherwise, uh, don't do that. Now we probably don't need that. All right. Well, how did we? This is us setting that information, but how, how it, sockets are always two way, and that's what makes them tricky. It's almost like this mind twist. Not only do you have to worry about you setting things, you have to worry about others setting stuff. Uh, on this app right here. So you're sending information to others, but you, this app has to work for both. It's got to work for the people who are, um, you got to work both ways to receive and send, unless you're doing something like that remote control, which has two different apps, one app for sending, one app for receiving. But most socket work, it's all in the same app and you're sending and receiving all in the same app. And that's what makes sockets uh, probably the, the more tricky things to, to code. 
So here is us setting up the gallery with the set gallery. So uh, the reason why we did this is this is when we're ready. When the socket is ready, we set the gallery. But maybe we're also going to call set gallery when we receive data. So let's see, where is the data receiving? Here it is, socket.onData. So when we get data back from other people, then we're going to collect that data and we're going to set gallery to that data. So it looks like when we don't pass in data, it just takes the latest. But if we do pass in data, then presumably the set gallery will deal with that data. So, uh, oh, when there's an error as well, we fade the overlay. So that's how we got around that. If there is an error in the socket, we're going to fade that overlay anyway. As a matter of fact, we probably could have done that then back in the code pen, but we didn't uh, bother or think about it at the time. All right, so here's the, the set gallery. There's us collecting the data. We're looping through uh, the number of picks and collecting I each time. And then it looks like we're going to deal with that data. So what about that data? Data comes in. Ah, uh, here it is. So each, each thing that we're setting, we do a little conditional or a little uh, ternary operator here. So if there is data, then we're going to use data border at i. So we're, we're looking for a border number. I suppose there's an array of border colors or something like that. And uh, at i is whatever, we're setting the border data for each of the pictures. So this might seem a little bit wasteful, but it's not all that bad. Um, basically what we're doing is we're sending the data for all of the pictures, including all of its border, all of its picture number, uh, we're sending that back and forth each time. So the data that we're getting is here. Now, I'm not sure. I can't remember. ZimSocket deals with some of that. So if, if, if data hasn't changed, then it won't send it. Yet, you're always a bit the, through the um, uh, ZimSocket uh, on the client, through ZimSocket on the client, like in the browser uh, that you would be using, um, you always have an up-to-date, um, uh, all the data will be up-to-date. It doesn't mean that it always gets sent. Um, it's up to the server to decide if that data has changed, to, to whether to send it or not. So it's not really do, handling all of them like this isn't really um, meaning that, that we have to send or receive all that data, like we don't have to request all the data. The data is, is kept up to date in a, in a sort of a separate uh, system. All right, so sorry about that. This is in bubbling. Here we go. All righty, we're going to loop through the picture numbers and set all the pictures. So rather than just say, oh, well, this data changed and this data changed and this data changed, therefore we'll do update these three pictures. It's just, it just does them all. It's a little bit easier. Why not? <laughs> all righty, so. Um, if there is data, then we get access from, from the data. This uh, comes from the type of data we're sending, I guess, back and forth. And here is the get latest. So if, if there's no data, if we didn't receive any data, then just get the socket's latest version for border 0, border 1, border 2, border 3. Okay, and the latest, latest values for those properties. And then this is actually setting the, the border number on our picture. So the picture has a set border method, and, and that's us uh, taking care of that. And same with the set pick. These are two methods that were done in our custom class up above. And for X and Y, it's a little bit easier. Hey, whatever picture we're dealing with, just set the X to whatever we receive from either the data or the starting value or the, the latest value when we first arrived here. And there you go, some wall information, kind of a similar thing, where if we have data for the wall information, use it. Otherwise, use the latest value, which would have been the first value when we arrived. Same with the order. Now, for the order, it's a little trickier. The order is coming, um, the order is coming in as an array. So that's uh, an array of the first thing and it probably is the first picture and it might have the number two that means it's going to be not zero not one but two <laughs> the third thing up and so here's a little loop that is arranging 
how that uh, that works out <laughs> somehow magically. <laughs> Go to that a little while ago. It looks a bit tricky. Uh, but anyway, that's that. And the end of the app. And sort of the end of our bubbling as well. That was just to take you through the fact that sockets are ready to go. We're going to be doing some more... We're going to be doing some more um, projects with sockets as well. We, we had one, uh, a nice, a really cool one called Grava or something like that. It's a sci-fi continuation of sci-fi story. And we built it all, but since the socket kept on, you know, fouling up on us, it wasn't, um, we, we didn't launch it. So we'll have to go back. It's uh, Sockets are very complicated. It is, it is very complicated. We did some explorers on that at the time. So you're welcome to look back at, at Zim Explorer. It's the YouTube videos for Zim Explorer and see I think two or three Explorer videos like an hour each going through that socket code because we had a couple well, a couple inklings. One is, uh oh, if, if we don't launch this because socket's just not ready, we can't get it running, then um, we're not going to remember what we coded. So we're probably going to end up watching those explore videos to remind us uh, how to continue coding, coding that stuff. All right. Uh, before we leave, there's that custom class. By the way, the class picture extends a container, <clears throat> and uh, there's the set border method, and here's the change pick or set pick method, which I suppose is calling a a private function called change pick. Anyway, there's that stuff right in there. To, handle our picture. Nice, huh? Woohoo! So come on into Zim, zimjs.com here. You can try it out, click on the cat, and we'll show you we'll show you some more bubblings as well. I think the we're gonna leave the, the generator to the last and we're about to do the connectors. So you can look to the next bubbling to see the connectors. Uh, we, we've done Flipper already, that was the last bubbling, and ZimSocket. And then the bubblings before are all on the synth and the wire and the text editor, synth, like all this stuff was in bubblings before, all new to Cat. And now, uh, oh, I should show you as well. If uh, you're on the Cat front page, a nice easy way is just scroll up and you get to this last page here. This is also the last page in the Cat updates, so that's where we were headed. The last page in the cat updates has uh, basically all of the changes. And then here is cat01 additions. So we went through and uh, talked about the most important of the additions. But for any of the updates in Zim, you can go to the docs page, or if you're on the Zim site, docs here, click on docs, click on updates like that. And here's all the updates for cat1. And so we're about to Take a look in the next one at Connectors. All right, so we'll see you then for Connectors. This is Dan Zen, or Dr. Abstract. <laughs> Losing track of names. Got so many. I'm also making um, pottery now. Oh, uh, shh, don't tell anybody. Slam Darklow. Does that sound cool? Slam Darklow, making pottery. And I am Hollander Maui, the photographer. So, yeah, these things happen. Have a great day. Come on in and visit us at zimzimjazz.com and slash Slack will get us to the Slack channel, get you to the Slack channel. Love to uh, talk to you about doing some multi-user if you're interested in doing that. Cheers.